Ah. Nitro! Oh. <laughs> <laughs> now I don't need to tell you guys how important it is to have more than just tools in your shop. Now whether it's a video game machine or a pool table, your shop is more than just a place to build projects. It's a spot to get away from the daily grind. And more importantly, it's not the size of your shop. And we're putting our money where our mouth is because we're right in the middle of putting together a fully custom CJ8 scrambler in what is basically a two-car garage. You see, we took the area under the mezzanine and built our own small garage. Then using common hand tools, we started with the drivetrain, building a set of custom 14-bolt axles, both front and rear, and then hung them on a Rusty's off-road four-link TJ suspension kit under a Throttle Down Customs hybrid frame. Now today, we're gonna get the axles and suspension back under this frame, as well as a drivetrain, wheels and tires, so we have a true rolling chassis. We'll drop a body on it, and we will even do some custom fabrication, even though we just have common hand tools in our small garage. It all starts with this bad boy right here, a 100% aluminum factory replacement scrambler body that we got from Aqualoo Industries. Now this body is a great choice for our project. I know that the four grand price tag might seem high for a budget build, but when we looked at a used CJ8, almost all of them were in pretty rough shape. That's gonna mean a pile of bodywork. Plus, we're trying to build a truck that would be equally at home on the trail as on the magazine cover. And that would mean custom paint. But with some WD-40, some 600 grit paper on a DA sander, and a final buff with some mother's polish. This body will look like chrome. Nice job, Chris. I like that mirror shine. Thanks, man. Now to mount this body onto the frame, we're gonna be using Daystar polyurethane mounts. Now these mounts have an integrated one inch body lift to raise the body off the frame. Plus the polyurethane will last forever and resist drying out and even cracking. Now the wheels that we picked for this project are both classic in name as well as style. The Mickey Thompson Classic 2 aluminum wheel. Now this wheel design has been around for what seems like forever and it truly is a timeless design. Now the high polished aluminum finish as well as the heavy load rating and the steel inserts that are placed in the mounting flange make these wheels extremely strong. But to make them even more capable off-road, we went ahead, boxed them up, and sent them out to Champion Beadlock. Now they went ahead and cut the outer lip off and welded on one of their Rock Thrasher Beadlock kits. Now this will pinch the outer bead of the tire when it's aired down to keep it from coming off the rim. Champion also sent us a set of rock knobs. Not only will they protect the bolt heads when you're on the trail, but they'll also give side traction when you're pinned against the rocks. And they look cool. The tires for this Jeep are 42 inch Interco IROX, 14 and a half inches wide. The scalloped three stage lug design really tears into the terrain. Plus the integrated side biters, along with the four ply sidewall, can handle some serious compression when aired down. Now one of the points of this particular project is to prove that we listen to what you guys want to see on the show, like building a complete truck in a small two-car garage. And when it came to the drivetrain, we really put our money where our mouth is. For the engine, we got to choose it. We chose an old school 383 Chevrolet small block, just a great all-around engine. But when it came to the transmission and transfer case, we put the power in your hands. We put a poll on our website and let you guys pick from a bunch of different options. And you picked a great one, a turbo 400 three-speed automatic backed by a new Process 205 that we're going to install with a bit of a twist. First things first, we're going to need some motor mounts. So with a mock-up 400 bolted to the back of our engine, we'll swing the whole package into the frame, cut up some tube. Now keeping with our theme, we're just going to use simple hand tools like a grinder and a 110 volt welder. Later on, the Scrambler makes a trip to a hardcore fab shop where we barter with a little bling. Stay tuned. Now 
Now we are right in the middle of putting together our 100% custom CJ8 Scrambler inside our small two-car garage. Now originally we dropped the body on the frame to check for clearance against the back of the engine. And now we've pulled it back off to deal with the transfer cases as well as a cross member. Now it's just going to be easier to work here without the body in the way. When it comes to transfer cases, it was your choice as to what we use. Thanks, Chris. Yep. And you guys made a great pick. The new Process 205 is possibly one of the strongest OEM cast iron all gear transfer cases you can choose. Now, there's always been one problem with this case, and that is that it only has a 1.96 to 1 low range ratio, which just isn't good enough for crawling. So here's the twist that we're going to throw in. We're going to install the range box off of a 203 transfer case. That will, in essence, double our low range ratio of this case, but for that, we're going to need some parts. Now it's all going to start with an Off-Road Designs doubler kit. Now this is a machined piece of billet 6061 aluminum. It's designed to accept the 203 range box on the front side and then adapt it so the 205 transfer case can bolt up to the back. Now this will give us two different low range ratios, a 2 to 1 as well as a 4 to 1. Now this isn't too bad, but we're going to go one step further. We're going to tear apart the 205 and rebuild it using a JB Conversions Low Max 3 to 1 kit. Now this is not only an upgraded housing for the 205, but it also has stronger and more importantly larger gears. Now the larger gears will give us a low range of 3 to 1. Now that means that in this combination we can have a 1 to 1 high, a 2 to 1 low, a 3 to 1 low and a 6 to 1 low. Ready? Now there are a couple of benefits to using the 203-205, especially when you're working in a small two-car garage. First of all, you're using basically throwaway transfer cases that you get from a junkyard, so the cost is a little bit lower than buying a brand new transfer case. And also, you need no special tools. You don't need a press, you don't need any major equipment, you just need a pair of snap ring pliers and a good set of punches, and you can put together a true four-speed transfer case. Now, one of the cool things about Jeeps is that the transmission mount is integrated into the skid plate. So all we have to do is mount it up underneath the frame and then we can mark and drill the locations for this rear mount. Now we'll also add a second mount off the back of this 205 to help take up some of the weight from this extra heavy duty case. Now, if you guys remember last time, we built two pretty killer axles for this truck. We cut up two 14 bolts, narrowed one, and turned one into a steering axle. Now, we only had... <laughs> ah, here we go. Now, we only had a 110-volt welder in the shop to tack on this TJ Link mount kit that we got from Rusty's Off-Road. So we carried them out to a welding shop and had them fully welded because we're only working in a small two-car garage. And now they're back here to have all the lockers, gears, and shafts installed. Now, we've shown you guys that a lot. Well, there's one thing that we want to spend some time right now talking about, and that's this front axle. Nobody has ever built this axle from a manufacturer. So there's a lot of little things you got to keep your eye on when you're building a 100% custom front axle. That is what we're going to talk about. Now there are some issues when you're building a hybrid axle like we have here. Now the most important is how to seal the axle shaft itself. Now this is a rear axle assembly that we converted to front axle. Now a front axle has a seal right here at the center section that's designed to keep the fluid inside here but not allow it to flow down the tube. On a rear axle you actually want the fluid to flow down the tube because it's going to lubricate the wheel bearings. Now there's a couple of ways that we could convert this rear axle into a sealing front axle. You go ahead, drill out the spot welds, press the axle tubes out, press in some new ones that are machined to accept a Dana 60 front axle seal. That's a lot of work, especially if you're working in just your two-car garage. So we did some research, called around, and we found a company called Seals It. 
Now Seals It specializes in seals for almost any rotating assembly that you can think of. Everything from big heavy duty industrial stuff right down to axles themselves. We gave them some measurements like the inside diameter of our tube as well as the size of the shaft that we're going to fit through this seal. And now we have a specific seal for our 14 bolt that we'll put right inside the tube to keep the fluid in the diff. The first step is to simply clean up the inside of the axle tube. It doesn't need to be polished, we just have to get rid of any welding slag or welding burrs when they made the axle at the factory. Then we'll lube up the O-rings on the seal and pop it into place. Now I'm sure a lot of you guys are wondering why spend all the time and effort to convert a 14 bolt rear axle into a front steering axle? Why not just get a Dana 60? Well, number one, it's just really cool. Anyone's going to look underneath the front of this truck, they're not going to know what it is. But more importantly, the 14 bolt has some unique features that make it very strong. The first one being the front pinion support bearing. Now this small bearing in this casting in the housing is designed to hold the front of the pinion and keep it from deflecting. When the gear set is under a serious load, the pinion can actually deflect off of the ring gear and lose good tooth contact and actually break the teeth off a lot easier. Now the adjusters for the side bearing load as well as backlash are threaded. They're not shim packs like in the Dana 60. Now that means that you can really fine tune that gear pattern check and get it set up perfectly. The ring gear itself is just larger. It's 10 and a half inches across. The Dana 60 is only nine and three quarters, making this a lot stronger because the teeth are physically larger. The differential assembly is housed inside this section and it's supported on four sides, making it stronger as well. And the last feature, it's not really a strength feature, it's just an easy to rebuild feature. The pinion itself is housed in this pinion support Inside here is a crush sleeve that collapses to set the pinion bearing preload. Now if you are working in a small garage like we are here and you don't have an impact strong enough to start crushing that crush sleeve, all you need to do is take your new pinion, the bearings and a new crush sleeve over to a differential shop. They can set up your pinion bearing preload for you and you can just bring this home, therefore making it real easy for the home builder. Welcome back to the Extreme Shop, where our CJ8 Scrambler is coming together in our bare bones two car garage. Ian and Chris are using just basic tools to prove you don't need 20 grand worth of shop equipment to build a custom Jeep at home. Now obviously we're just mocking everything into place to take some critical measurements and also take care of a few little details. Now the front axle, we went ahead and installed a spindle as well as a used rotor hat and rotor to measure for the axle shafts that we're going to order from Randy's Ring and Pinion. And now we're going to take care of a couple issues that came up earlier. Now we installed a 5 inch suspension system right out of the box when we first put this thing on here. The problem is, is we saw the Jeep just sat a little bit too tall. So we called up Rusty's Off-Road and they sent us the shorter 3 inch coil springs for this kit and that will just bring the center of gravity down a little bit lower. Now one other thing we want to take care of while we're here are the shocks. Now the shocks that come with the kit, they're a good shock. They're just a typical gas charged monotube shock. The problem is, is they can actually limit the articulation. The upper pin mount is obviously stiff and then the bottom poly bushing mount on the axle doesn't really give the axle a lot of flexibility. So we're going to install a set of QA1 Adventure Series shocks. Now the nice thing about these shocks is they are fully rebuildable and tunable so we can tear them down and change the valving pack to fine tune on our suspension. But the really cool feature is that the upper mount is like a ball joint, allows for 30 degrees of movement on the top end of the shock. And the bottom is the same thing, it's a QA1 spherical rod end with misalignment spacers built in place. So once these are bolted to our axle, it'll help our Jeep flex when we're on the trail. Check it out. Now obviously you guys have figured out, just because we're building this Jeep in a small two car garage, we're not holding back on the custom touches. And that doesn't end with our seats. I'm sure we could have went and got a set from a junkyard, but they certainly wouldn't be as cool or as comfortable as a set of full suspension seats from PRP. Now these are a tubular constructed frame with parachute cord draped between the two tubes to give us the suspension action. But the cool thing about PRP is they're really known for their over the top vinyl selection. And we went ahead and picked a brushed aluminum vinyl finish for the center and then a black carbon fiber outer edge to really sort of tie in the whole theme for our project Jeep. 
Plus, with their universal fit seat brackets made specifically for our Jeep tub, these things will bolt right in. With the seats in place, it's time for a cage. Now that's usually not a problem for us here at Extreme because we got the benders, notchers, grinders, and welders. But because we're working in a small two-car garage, we're gonna have to come up with a different plan. You'll see that after the break. Welcome back to Extreme and to Essentially Off-Road where our Jeep Scrambler roll cage will come together. Now, obviously we could put the cage into this Jeep back at Extreme, but you know, when you're building on a budget like we are with this project, every now and then you gotta step back and let somebody else do the heavy lifting. Not because you can't do it yourself, but because they've invested in all the tools that are required to do it right. Essentially Off-Road is a four x four repair and custom fab shop, specializing in everything from lift kits, accessories, drivetrain components, to full-blown turnkey buggies. All right, we dragged Jimmy here out from behind his solid gold desk up front here at Essentially Off-Road. Uh, hey, thanks for letting us uh, take over your no shop problem. for No problem, I appreciate it. Um, now, you sent us a cage kit, right? Yes, sir, our trail rider kit. But since we brought our Jeep here, you're gonna do some things a little bit different just for this project, right? Yes. Mm -hmm. So what, uh, do we have any issues we need to watch out for because we got a CJ8 with a CJ7 cage? Um, the cage is designed for a CJ7, uh, but what will happen is the cage will basically terminate right here on the Jeep. Uh, Y'all running a standard CJ7 hardtop, so that'd be a great for your application. We're gonna tie the A and the B pillars together, allow you to mount your seat belts to that for extra security. What I was thinking is uh, we come off the frame, tubular rocker guards, come back to the frame several times and tie that straight into the cage for strength for the cage and the rocker guard. Now, let me ask you this question. If you were to do this for somebody, this exact same thing, do you have a ballpark figure as to what, what that cost? Um, probably about $1,100 if we were gonna do it. Just you roll the Jeep in, we do it, you pick it up. Um, that can vary depending on if you want it powder coated, how well a paint job you want on the Jeep, and how much you want as far as seat mounts, seat belts, you know, and anything like All that. All that kind of stuff. But either way, at, even if it's 1100 to 1500 that's cheaper than going out and buying a 220 volt welder, and Definitely. you still don't have a tubing bender or a tubing notcher. Uh -huh. So if you're working on a budget, this is the best way to go. Yep. You know, gold's gone through the roof. Water. Chris has been wearing this solid gold necklace oh. for a while, and... Uh, I like that. That's my style right there. <laughs> I think... With gold being so high, I think we have a deal. Yes, yeah, we're good. We're golden. I love that. That's we have an accord. 